Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we'll be talking about a very large and powerful and dangerous winter storm that is going to be developing um, across the United States. It's already making its uh, making its impacts and its footprint across the western United States, but it will continue to bring impacts into the central and eastern United States including a very large, potentially severe weather outbreak tomorrow, which is by far the most concerning part of this system. Um, there is a high chance for a, a solid tornado outbreak, unfortunately, so I'll be obviously covering that. And yeah, this thing definitely may not look as significant as it actually will be just by looking at the model. So I will be um, showing you that. So yeah, th we haven't had such a dangerous storm in such a while, I would say. Um, currently, if you were to take a look at the radar, um, the session expired. Let me refresh this. You can see that there is a whole plethora of advisories and warnings for a good portion of the United States. Uh, obviously, a lot of these watches here are to do with another system that's going to be coming in right after on the heels of this one. So the pattern is very active. And you can see a lot of these advisories here and these warnings are, in fact, to do with the one that we're currently talking about. You can see across the higher elevations up to 16. Notice we also have a set of advisories. As I was saying yesterday, most likely these amounts would be too marginal to produce a winter storm warning but an advisory and you can see it affects large cities like Omaha, Sioux Falls, uh, uh, North Platte, Lincoln, a lot of Nebraska cities, a good portion of northeastern, uh, sorry, northwestern Iowa, southwestern South Dakota, um, sorry, southeastern South Dakota and a good portion of southern central Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin. So notice that some of the mounts, especially near the lake, could be approaching up towards a foot. And, you know, the first decent big snowfall for the Minneapolis amounts, you know, anywhere from 3 to 6, maybe even 7 to 8 inches, especially if you do see some impressive banding. Um, obviously, the severe weather is going to be definitely the top concern with this system. Notice this is the area for tomorrow, so not today, but tomorrow. Notice we have a moderate, again, as I was fearing yesterday, most likely an event like this where the Storm Prediction Center issues an enhanced so many days out. There is, uh, you know, almost no chance that there wouldn't be a moderate I don't know if there's going to be a high, I don't think so, but it's definitely a possibility, and obviously, um, it doesn't really matter whether or not it's a 4 or 5, the, the main message is it's a very dangerous weather <coughs> situation, most likely, developing tomorrow, and you can see the, 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 the hot spot is including northwestern Mississippi, um, northern Mississippi, almost into portions of extreme, extreme southwestern Tennessee right there, a sliver of eastern uh, Arkansas, and a, uh, and a little portion of northeastern Louisiana, right? And again, you, you know, this thing is assuming that, um, well, you know, we're talking about these regions, assuming this map is accurate, and for the most part it will be, but don't be surprised if you do see some adjustments, right? Maybe Tennessee gets, um, you know, into that moderate tomorrow, and even if it doesn't, even even if you're in an enhanced, which is that darker kind of orange color right outside of that red, that's still, you know, you could definitely see tornadoes there. They just may not be as strong. But um, again, uh, you know, there, there were outbreaks before where the strongest tornadoes occurred right outside of the hot spot where the storm prediction center thought they would occur. So again, as I mentioned yesterday, the biggest threat would be tornadoes. And you can see there's a 50% chance across that area within a 50 mile radius. I'm um, sorry, within 25 miles of a point. So again, um, um, that is a pretty significant risk. <clears throat> I, again, I don't. Maybe they'll issue a 30. That would obviously be warranted of a um, a high risk at that point. So that would be very concerning. Wind, you could see, is also definitely a threat. Uh, it's a large area, including you know Memphis, Jackson, Jackson, Tennessee, Mississippi. Both Jacksons there. Hail, a bit of a less of a risk. But again, with any big supercell, there's a tornado. You could see some hail threat. It just may not be as prevalent as what the tornado and um, clearly the wind threat will be. So let's track this system them out right so let's look at a her model so this is a model that is short range it goes out to only 18 hours and every six hours it goes out to 48 hours so let's take a look at that 48 hour run again right now it's not much going on across the um across the united states well right now let's take a look so this is what it shows at 5 p.m this model right and this is what it's going this is what's going on at 5 p.m let me take off some of these layers so you can see this better it's pretty accurate it's again a model that usually has very few inaccuracies and you can see that's roughly what is going on right now across the united states 
As we play this over into the overnight hours, notice we see this cold front solidifying into a more solid band, spilling snow over into Minnesota as early as again 11, 10 p.m. tonight. And I say early because, um, yeah, it's it's a bit questionable whether or not this will be solely a Tuesday event, or you know, again, if the uh, saturation of the atmosphere occurs a bit quicker and this um, little band of snow stretches out a little bit quicker, there could be some snow already occurring, you know, even as far east as Minneapolis as early as um, well midnight. So again, this model you can see firm shows us snow moving in mainly north of Minneapolis by the morning <clears throat> hours 4 or 5 p.m. northern Nebraska seeing uh, quite a bit of snow again you can see that low pressure it is start starting to intensify 993 again the severe weather is still non present at this point it's gonna be mainly late tomorrow type event notice there will be some icing north of this there will be some pretty impressive snowfall rates with this so I kind of want to zoom in on this because this may seem very disconnected from the Gulf of Mexico nothing impressive but as you can see we do see some snow um, some darker colorations getting in there and this is an event that uh, could definitely over let's say over surprise and overperform um, and notice that by late tomorrow in the morning so 10 a.m um now this is um 1 a uh, sorry 11 a.m this is now noon you can see it's mainly done with nebraska still snowing across the area still snowing across iowa and really snowing across minnesota and to portions of wisconsin the arrowhead and you can see this thing's begin begins tilting pretty positively and what we do see is a a, uh, a kind of a weakening um, weakening trend and we see more precipitation from the south developing here as this thing swoops away you can see there's a little tail that it kind of develops that could bring some additional accumulations even into southeastern minnesota and even as far west as maybe cedar rapids across iowa and into maybe even clipping areas like uh, dubuque lacrosse and what's not so if you take a look at the total snowfall from this there could be some pretty significant amounts you know uh, assuming that this is uh, especially since this is the first major snowfall of the season again right now it seems the heaviest amounts will be just north of the Twin Cities. However, again, this could fluctuate. I would not be surprised to see some six, seven, eight inch amounts across the Twin Cities. Again, pretty big event. Um, nothing incredible, but definitely one that's um, going to be, uh, you know, it's going to provide some hazards, especially given the fact this is November 30th. Notice northern Nebraska getting in on some several inches of snow and maybe even to Iowa and Wisconsin, a band of half an inch with that little tail that swings around. Let's now go back and start showing you the southern United States. This is the area that we're really concerned about, right? The, the snow obviously is going to have its impacts. It's going to have, you know, its um, unfortunate consequences, but the, the, the severe weather is, is going to be a lot more concerning. Notice we do see some showers, some scattered thunderstorms of Developing across 10 or 11 a.m. These aren't the ones that are going to be really, uh, you know, the ones that are going to be producing the massive tornadoes or the long track tornadoes or just a tornado. Don't underestimate these. These could still have some large hail, some damaging wind, and maybe even a tornado. But um, again, the, the main threat uh, risk area, I would say, starts developing towards the afternoon hours. You can see these storms start kind of um, really getting themselves together in these groups to become more uh, significant. You can see those colorations grow. We see some supercell structures develop. And again, this could um, be kind of delayed a few hours or early a few hours, depending on how uh, the system again kind of works out. If I were a betting man and if were to change from what the HER model is showing, I would say more likely for them to be delayed. But at this point, there's no real indications of, of that. And notice that what we do start seeing is um, these storms, again, starting to develop very, very, especially around this 8, 9, 10 o'clock hour. We could start seeing some, again, some tornadoes, some pretty long track tornadoes, a, a pretty good wind threat. And you could see the, these these thunderstorms could be tracking area over an area, one after the other, after the other. And there could be some nasty thunderstorms as far, far north as, you know, Illinois, Indiana. Um, these won't be severe, but they will have some rain, some potent winds, and what's not. And, uh, yeah, this is definitely, may not look too impressive on the radar, but, um, you know, that's not the only thing that goes into these forecasts. And you can see that as I just run this forward now through the overnight hours, this this really spills into a good portion of Alabama, Mississippi. At this point, it's going to become more of a wind threat and heavy rainmaker, not necessarily a tornado threat. It definitely could, and that could be one of the things that the Storm Prediction Center maybe um, have to expand some of these, um, you know, some of those areas because of how well this looks organized pretty far into the night and pretty far southeast. Again, by Wednesday morning, this severe weather threat is mainly done. These aren't going to be capable of producing tornadoes, but still some nasty winds and some pretty strong rainfall. So, in terms of the total moisture that I could show you, the total accumulated uh, precipitation, notice, um, especially across southern Alabama and the Gulf Coast, where this cold front kind of stalls out, there could be some significant rain. But even where we have several storms, one after the other, right, that could definitely cause a lot of uh, issues with flooding and whatnot. And again, the, the CERN model does a recent, decent job of showing this, way better than any global model. 
but it still struggles showing those exact stripes and where that happens. That is just something you um, you really just can't predict. So let's take a look at um, the uh, simulated radar. So this is kind of showing us, I guess, the cloud tops and whatnot. It's a good indication of you know how significant a, a thunderstorm is. And notice that again, the early morning thunderstorms they're gonna take they're gonna take a lot to kind of get going at first. But the later ones, you can see they um, they explode quite more significantly. You see those caps. You see some pretty uh, pretty negative uh, colorations here in terms of the temperatures. So that indicates that they're higher up as you know in the atmosphere. The higher up a cloud top is, the colder it is. So you know some 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 hail. Definitely be a threat and you could see across Mississippi we really start seeing that develop and uh, yeah overall very 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 impressive event let's move on into portions of the northeastern United States let's take this back to uh, you know current time frame as here won't be a severe threat but there could be a pretty nasty heavy rain threat so notice you're right that for now we don't really see anything too significant going on and we really won't even into tomorrow most of the day will be uh, pretty quiet, but as we push this into the evening hours, you see a lot of storms, a lot of showers, pretty clustery at first, right, zooming through Ohio, but then eventually uh, kind of com combining into more of a consistent um, consistent rain mass, and you can see that as this pushes, we see quite some snow across southern Canada, but also quite some heavy rain across the northeast. So, um, as we uh, push this forward, sorry about that, my cat was uh, distracting me there so for the past few seconds there. How are you doing, <laughs> little kitty cat? Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> All right, uh, you got guys can't see her, unfortunately, but she's right here. Um, and I wanted to go back and show you this. So as I was mentioning, a lot of clusters of rain at first, but later on, this starts developing into more of a kind of co cohesive rain mass. And you can see right there, we see the beginnings of it. Um, and we run out of time here, unfortunately, at 48 hours. But I can show you a different model like the NAM 12 game. Notice it shows that rain mass, and it potentially could be intensifying as it zooms through the northeast. Um, and we could see some decent lake effect. There are actually some winter storm watches already in effect for some of these lakes. As um, We could be seeing some lake effect. Nothing you know incredible like last time we saw saw with those with those lake effect bands <clears throat> but definitely um definitely something that uh, could still be uh something that we have to watch for so notice total accumulated precipitation from this pretty decent rainfall amounts across the northeast again some of these may be underestimated if you take a look at models um <clears throat> like the gfs you can see they show similar similar rainfall amounts the canadian model another model that you take like a look at take a look at show some stronger amounts and then the European, which I'll just show you the whole, I guess, system with the European, because I think that's the best handle. Notice again, there's that cold front, there's that severe weather tomorrow, and then there's that explosion of, you know, convection and whatnot, rain, and you can see this thing becomes a monster. It may not seem pretty big even, you know, tomorrow, or tomorrow in the evening, uh, but it eventually turns into this wind machine, produces a lot of winds, brings in a pretty nasty, cold, sharp bit of air pretty far south into the United States. And we see a cold front again that has a lot of snow across Quebec and on Ontario and a lot of rain for the Northeast, but the good news is it comes out of here very quickly. Um, and yeah, you can see that the pattern remains active following that. So that's another thing I wanted to mention that if you are interested to know what what you know what the winter has or what December might bring, it looks increasingly likely that the pattern will remain active. There will be quite a bit of cold air into the early parts of December, and there could be quite a bit of snow. Let's just say it looks very interesting. You can see different models showing different storms. The European showing this pretty pretty massive one here, potentially developing early next week, around a week from today. So, yeah, uh, definitely not a quiet pattern. You can see more activity coming in from the northwest and the west. Um, let's take a look at the GFS now and show the kind of the global United States. This model run literally just came out um, a few minutes ago. It just fully processed all of its data and noticed that there's that system we're talking about now. But later on in the future, we see more storms. Look at that one that the GFS shows. Um, and uh, then maybe a little bit of a quiet breakdown, but some interesting features here. You can see a lot of precipitation coming in from the back. Uh, maybe some sort of a clipper developing here again yeah uh, no no shortage of interesting weather features in the in the in the long range so that's definitely something we'll have to keep an eye on for and yeah uh, this is uh, definitely something that uh, could be very dangerous regarding tomorrow's outbreak let's take a look at a different model kind of perspectives so this is the fv3 model another decent high range model though it may not be as good as the her model from what i remember with all its forecasting issues but still one I like to look at and notice there, uh, there's that severe weather outbreak across the south really showing those deep colors. And again, um, as it pushes through into Wednesday, 
uh, during the daytime, you can see a lot of that turns pretty heavy precipitation across the northeast and maybe even, a, a, you know, some again, some convection there. So that's something, something to watch for. And, you know, the slight risk is pretty big and even the marginal extends as far north as southern Indiana, southern Illinois. So that's something we have to watch for. And the thunderstorm risk overall extends across a good, good chunk of the United States there. So, yeah, you know, um, it's definitely something that we're concerned about here. Um, and if you take a look at what the criteria means, because I may be throwing around a lot of these words, right? Oh, a moderate, a high. Well, you can see a moderate is high confidence that many storms, right? so many thunderstorms, will contain damaging winds, severe hail, and or tornadoes. Several severe storms are likely to be significant, so, you know, well above the criteria of at least 75 miles per hour or 2 inches in diameter or tornado of at least EF. Um, to a rating and a tornado a tornado even of ef1 or zero could cause quite a bit of you know damage or stir up uh, ef2 obviously a lot ef3 is very significant ef4 and then ef5 is just something that hasn't occurred in several years at this point hopefully it doesn't but um yeah enhanced you can see uh, that one you know it's still also pretty scary sounding. High confidence that several storms contain damaging wind, severe hail. And high, you know, a high risk is something we haven't seen in a, in a while. I think I believe over a year now across the United States, uh, and, you know, in any part. And you can see high confidence in outbreak of storms. You know, that one is something you really don't want to see. Um, and yeah, your area may experience that only once or twice in a, a lifetime. And even the moderate, though, similar to intense storms, your area may only experience one per year or less. And uh, even enhances, you know, just once or twice a year. So slight is something, you know, more usual um, and a marginal, you know, several times per year. Still, though, n you can't underestimate these as... Um, uh, and sorry, earlier I was reading the criteria. This is actually the significant criteria. This is in, in order to c call it a severe storm. So again, um, when they say several likely to be significant, this is what they mean. At least two inches in diameter, EF2 or greater, and wind gusts of at least 75. In order to make it severe, this is what it needs which is still you know could cause damage even a regular thunderstorm uh, could um you know be, be, be bad and you can see right there general thunderstorm although severe weather is not expected all thunderstorms can produce deadly lightning gusty winds and small hail and similar to storms you experience area experiences many times per year all right guys that is basically it thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you all on the next episode that is basically it thank you guys see ya